ಸದಾಶಿವಸಮಾರಂಭಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಹನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವರುಣೇಂದ್ರ ರುದ್ರಮರು ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈ ಸಾಂಗಪದಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಸಾಮಗ ಧ್ಯಾನಾವಸ್ಥಿ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ಯಾಂತಂ ನ ವಿದುಸುರಸುರಗಣ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಭಗವಾಚ ಶ್ರೀಭಗವಾಚ ಅಭಯ ಸತ್ವ ಸಂಶುದ್ಧಿ ಅಭಯ ಸತ್ವ ಸಂಶುದ್ಧಿ ಆನಯೋಗವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿ ಆನಯೋಗವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿ ದಾನ ದಮಶ್ಚ ಯಜ್ಞಶ್ಚ ದಾನ ದಮಶ್ಚ ಯಜ್ಞಶ್ಚ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯಸ್ತವ ಆರ್ಜವ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯಸ್ತವ ಆರ್ಜವ ಅಹಿಂಸಾ ಸತ್ಯಮಕ್ರೋಧ ಅಹಿಂಸಾ ಸತ್ಯಮಕ್ರೋಧ ತ್ಯಾಗಶಾಂತಿರಪೈಶುನ ತ್ಯಾಗಶಾಂತಿರಪೈಶುನ ದಯಾಭೂತೇಶ್ವಲೋ ಲುಪ್ತ ದಯಾಭೂತೇಶ್ವಲೋ ಲುಪ್ತ ಮಾರ್ಧವ ಹ್ರೀರಚಾಪಲ ಮಾರ್ಧವ ಹ್ರೀರಚಾಪಲ ತೇಜ ಕ್ಷಮಾಧೃತಿ ಶೌಚ ತೇಜ ಕ್ಷಮಾಧೃತಿ ಶೌಚ ಅದ್ರೋಹೋ ನಾತಿ ಮಾನಿತ ಅದ್ರೋಹೋ ನಾತಿ ಮಾನಿತ ಭವಂತಿ ಸಂಪದ ದೈವಿ ಭವಂತಿ ಸಂಪದ ದೈವಿ ಅಭಿಜಾತಸ್ಯ ಭಾರತ ಅಭಿಜಾತಸ್ಯ ಭಾರತ ಸೊ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಡೈವಿ ಸಂಪತ್ ಸೊ ದ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಮೇಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಹೂ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಈವನ್ ಬಿ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ದೇವ that is called daivi sampat right so deva means not somebody who is living in some world deva is anybody who has noble qualities they say noble so something like that we have to look at so abhayam satva samshuddhi jnana yoga vyavasthitah okay we saw that also and uh, a committed pursuit the of the shastri that is called jnana yoga vyavasthita not some casual maybe it started out as a casual inquiry what is bhagavad gita right that kind of stuff but it should grow into a very committed pursuit and uh, 
it should grow to such a pursuit that slowly all other things are dropping off. And that's how, that's how we commit ourselves as a grahastha. Shankaracharya will take it one step further and he will say, Jnanam Sanyasa Lakshana. Right? So, Swamiji Paramatananda, he said once, he said, you know, in that movie, Shankara, the G.V. Ayers movie, Adi Shankara, it seems those who come to Shankara to study, he will have a, this, uh, this Kashaya Vastra, which is stacked there. And so he just says, okay, come, take this, take Sanyas. Okay, okay, come, I'll teach you, take this Sanyas. Like that, he does it seems. So that part, uh, it's been a while since I saw the movie. But uh, that is that is Shankara's idea. So, committed. Not an amateurish, lukewarm pursuit, casual pursuit. Uh, so, it's a very important value. Once that value is there, then everything else comes along with it. All right. Damaha. Damaha. All these values we've seen before. Kracharya, when Sri Krishna feels these are important, that's why he is re repeating. Ahimsa is going to come. Everything is, is a repeat. So, that Damaha. Because in Katopanishad, this is Paranchikani, Vyatranat Swayambhu. By nature, the human being is just outward, is, a, is an experienced hunter. Okay? And so, it doesn't mean we have to be a victim of that nature. Right? So, that's why Damaha, then followed by Shamaha. And uh, Damaha is a is a self-enforcement. Enforcement coming from outside. Somebody constantly tells you, no, no, you don't eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that. Like that they say. That becomes very annoying. And uh, <laughs> and then somebody else enforces means uh, after some time it is suppression and then it leads to depression. Swamiji says suppression, depression. Oppression leads to suppression, suppression leads to depression. Right? So that I think we all can understand. And so that's why they say, when taking care of children, you just have to be very careful. And uh, allowing them their share of freedom they have to do what they want to do. Careful balance is there. So that when, the, when that thing comes from inside, then it becomes joyful. Because then it's self-enforced and there is a purpose I'm doing it. And uh, so, this John Bradshaw, uh, he says, discipline is a way of reducing agony. So, I still remember that sentence. He had said that. And so, that, that is, we are not new to that. And so, and so, Dhamma is important. And uh, so, that's why the Ashrama Dharma is there, you know. Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyasa. It is meant for us to develop all these qualities. And so it is not new to us. And as we grow older, we, we begin to imbibe all these values and these values reflect. As we have seen in our elders when we grow up. And so again, this is not new at all for us. And so initially, Artha, Kama, then Dharma, then Moksha. So like that it comes. So Dhamaha, Chair followed by Shama. That can be added. Okay. Yajnas Yajnaha. So we saw a lot of Yajnas in chapter 4. Uh, where Krishna had asked us to look at various activities as Yajna. Yajna is an attitude. It is an action outright. It is some Yaga. It's a Homa. It's a fire ritual like that you can say. But Start with fire ritual, all right, but then slowly convert all our activities into yajnas. Get up in the morning and say, you know what, I am going to do a yajna. I woke up today to do a, my daily yajna. This whatever I do today is going to be my yajna. Suppose I get up with that attitude. Then the day is going to be purposeful. It's going to reflect all the values I've studied and I've lived through. And so, that is also a yajna. <clears throat> So, yaj, deva puja, that is the meaning of the word yaj. There are other meanings also, but for us, deva puja, that is yaj. And so, 
<coughs> so two ways. One is ceremonial puja. Ceremonial, ritual, puja. So going to a temple and doing a puja or doing a puja at home, whichever way. So ceremonial, that action, that ritual is so important. That is what invokes the attitude that Prasada Buddhi and Ishwarar Pana Buddhi will, in, will be invoked by those actions. Action is very important. Action. So, like giving a gift to somebody on a birthday. You give them a gift, however small or big, doesn't matter. You give them a gift, then the, the love is shared between them. And you have to say, speaking also, words also are very powerful. But like that, the ritual is important. Ritual. And so that is one way. That is also called yeah. Uh -huh. And second is what? <coughs> Converting our daily activities into a yajna by invoking the proper attitude. And for us, the attitude comes through shlokas and mantras. <coughs> by the minute you get up, and then you say you you worship Mother Earth. Okay. Samudra Vasane Devi, Parvatastana Mandale, Vishnu Patni Namastubyam, Padas Parsham Kshamastubhya. Hey, I'm stepping on you. So may you pardon me. Look at that. The, the, look at the attitude. The whole day. Imagine starting the day like that. The child starts the day like that. Then immediately the child will know, yeah, the whole uh, I'm I'm gifted today. And I can do my best. And I can accept whatever comes. So that is that is what converting is. Taking a shower, there is a mantra. Having food, there is a mantra. Like this, every studying, of course, there is a mantra. And so, beautiful. That is also yajna. A person who does that is yajna. But may not go to the temple. Still, the person has built that attitude. And... Uh, <clears throat> So, yadyat karma karomi tatta dakilam shambhotava aradhana. Shiva manasa puja. Shankaracharya. Whatever I do, it becomes an offering to you. Whatever I do. So, I think that's a brilliant, uh, you know, uh, the teaching that our Shastra has given us. And it connects with the vision that we are looking for here. So, that is why often in when we, you know, Ganesh Chaturthi and Guru Purnima and all, I am doing a puja. I am doing a puja because I want everybody to learn to do a puja and teach children how to do the puja. Puja is simple. You invoke God and then you, you start the puja. Say some mantras and then finish the puja. Five minutes is all it will take. So, at home, if children are there, especially young children, they will come running. You drink the bell. You keep the bell handy. Okay, bell is very important in my opinion. Okay, because you know what? It will bring everybody's attention. Kidding, 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 kidding. Suddenly, the whole house you can imagine. Whatever people are doing, they will just. So the, our culture is like that. They will just know something will happen. They will automatically do like this. They will become quiet. And even watching TV, gripping murder show, still the mind will come back to the bell. So keep a bell handy. If you don't have a bell, you let me know. I will send you a bell. Nice heavy bell. And it makes a sound. The neighbors also should hear it. Okay? <laughs> like that you keep. And then everybody will know. Oh, puja is going. And children will come running. And then you offer all the flowers. Then they will say, no, no, I will do. I want to do. I want to do. I want to do. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. Okay. Then say this mantra. Om Sumukha Yanamaha. Om Ekadanta Yadamaha. Sixteen names. You do it every day and then it will you'll come. Memorize it. Okay. And then, uh, so that's very important. So that's why we are, we are doing that. Okay. No, I'm not able to do puja for various reasons. Panchamaha Yajna is there. Panchamaha Yajna. I've talked about it at length. And so you can review that class if you want to. <clears throat> so Pitru Yajna, family. Then uh, Achiti Yajna, Manusha Yajna, people, helping people. And then Bhuta Yajna, helping animals and the nature. And then Deva Yajna and Brahma Yajna. Deva means the entire ecology. Brahma Yajna means Veda, study of the Veda. These are the five Yajnas. Pancha Maha Yajna, it is there in the Veda. The statement comes from the Veda. Okay? All right. So this is Yajna. <clears throat> Then, Swadhyayaha. 
स्वाध्याय देर इज अ ग्रुप कॉल्ड स्वाध्याय 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 ग्रुप आई थिंक द नेम इज कॉल्ड स्वाध्याय दे मे हैव सम प्रीफिक्स सफिक्स डोंट नो स्वाध्याय सो दे टॉक अबाउट सेल्फ स्टडी दैट द वैल्यू लुक एट दैट वैल्यू वी हैव टू स्टडी व्हाटएवर इट इज शास्त्र में यू स्टडी स्टडी एज अ ग्रुप डू समथिंग सिट एंड स्टडी एवरी वीक एवरी डे सो दैट स्क्रिप्चरल स्टडी शास्त्र पठनम शास्त्र श्रवणम स्पेशली इज कॉल्ड स्वाध्याय हां Which is the Brahma Yajna, the fifth Yajna of the Panchamahaya, correct? Brahma Yajna, called Swadhyaya. And uh, so, in our tradition, because we have so many, our 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 based on Sanskrit and uh, the texts are all big, and the children start learning from a young age, and the Parayan, Parayan recitation, chanting, what we call, and so it's learned at a young age, and. Uh, children absorb so much you'll be surprised you all know parents know this very well and so that is called shabda shabda avritti means repeat just repeat keep repeating repeat and uh, children love it children love it so even without knowing the meaning chanting is the best way to start our lives and then what does it mean one day we will ask Yeah. Okay. Now we are getting ready for what is called Shravanam. Shravanam. So Artha Abhut. So Artha Pradana. Shravanam. It is called. Okay. So that's very important. So somebody sent a video. And oh, America, they are making the children chant in Sanskrit. Some video comes. We don't know if it is fake or not. Nothing these days. Our children grew up in Baba Black Sheep and this, you know, those those things. And they are. It seems it seems it improves their pronunciation. So, so that's good. So somebody in the twinkle, world is twinkle, doing that. Twinkle, twinkle, huh? twinkle, twinkle, little star. Twinkle, twinkle, little. Anyway, everything is good for children. Nothing wrong with that, but not at the expense of some treasures that we have. That's what I mean. All right. स्वाध्याय हाँ सो इन पतंजलि योग सूत्र आल्सो इट इज देयर स्वाध्याय शौचम तप स्वाध्याय तप ईश्वर प्रणिधान सो इट इज देयर पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट इज कॉल्ड नियम यम नियम आसन प्राणायाम राइट अष्टांग योग यू हैव ऑल दैट सो देयर अंडर नियम यू हैव ऑल दिस यू हैव शौचम सतोष एंड देन तप स्वाध्याय ईश्वर प्रणिधानीश्वर प्रणिधान Anyway, so swadhyaya is very important, very important. Otherwise, what will happen? We will get disconnected, disconnected. So disconnected, disconnected. Then we wonder what is all this life about. People in India won't ask such questions. What is all this life? They won't ask why because they know life already. They, whether they are they are studious or not doesn't matter. Somehow going to temples, this that they all, they all. Take it in a stride. In a stride, things are taken. But this vacuum, if swadhyaya and all these things are not there, then a vacuum will be there. At some point, you you see a vacuum and then you feel helpless. So these things are very useful <clears throat> even for normal living, right? All right. Tapaha. Tapaha. Tapaha means religious discipline. Simply translate. Any. Any religious discipline. So he is going to talk about it again in the next uh, couple of chapters. Later he will talk about it. But all the in a Vedic lifestyle, there is always karma. Means there is always duties to be done, Vedic rituals to be done, and especially married means immediately many more rituals. 
and so vihita karmani then japa then puja prarthana ji prarthana di and then either at home or outside and then utsavas are there all this ganesh chaturthi navaratri all these things are great opportunities for reinvoking the tapas tapas means what akracharya we we covered this you know what we saw it in one one chapter 10th chapter we saw it okay 10 5 if you want to make a note ahimsa samata tushtihi tapodanam yasho yasha 10 5 okay 10.5 so there we saw, there he defines tapaha as sharira pedanam chakracharya. Sharira pedanam means what? A purposely, intentionally, deliberately giving discomfort to the body. Means what? You don't deliberately do it. Hey, you do you do some parayana means you have to sit. Akanda nama japa means you have to sit. It is uh, difficult to sit for three, four, five hours. Very difficult. And you got to forego all the drinks and this and that. And so it is Sharira Pidanam only. And so Sharira Pidanam. But then he puts an adjective in front of that. Sharira Pidanam doesn't mean simply taking a whip and then you know beating ourselves like that. That is also Sharira Pidanam. But then he says, Indriya Sanyama Purvakam. Indriya Sanyama Purvakam Sharira Pidanam. Hey, you are ready for it. This kind of thing. Indriya Sanyama is there. Shama and Dhamma is there. Therefore, now you have a you have a direction to life. You know why you're doing all these things. And so Shivaratri means it's just, it's just, uh, it's a lot of, you know, how am I going to keep awake? Keep awake, I think, is the most difficult thing, right? People can do anything except keep awake, correct? Especially in our Bhagavad Gita classes. But that's different. But you're all different, not in your class. You're all very alert people. I know that. But, uh, so that is called Sharira Pidanam, right? Uh, so, people go to the gym. Hey, what is all this discipline? Hey, you guys do the same discipline. You go to the gym and do, ah. Oh. Uh, what is that? Uh, what is all this? Muscles, this, that. So, they do that. that I, but that one is not Indriya Sanyama Purvaka. Okay, that is not Indriya Sanyama Purvaka. That is to show off. Yeah, that is to show off. Okay, if you can put yourself through that kind of torture, this is mental strengthening. This is not physical strengthening. This is not physical endurance. This is for mind. For the mind to get ready. And uh, <clears throat> it's the best way to Best way to counter all the ups and downs that are going to happen in life. Correct? Best way. The, my mind is like a shock absorber. Then, even though I'm getting what I don't want, still, I can accept it. I can I can actually smile. <clears throat> so, and that's why you've got all these, all these uh, Tirtha Yatras are there. That is also Tapas. Tirtha Yatra. And some of the Tirtha Yatras are, are not easy at all. Shabrimala Tirtha Yatra, the other day I mentioned, not easy at all. They, you have to go through Guru and all, and then you, the whole, it starts two, three months before it's. And abstaining this, that, it's not at all easy. I think a person will get transformed when they go to Shabrimala, going through this process. And uh, so, See, and then Badrinath, Kedarnath, all this north they go. And there it is difficult because snow, mountains, climbing, all these things, several set, different set of problems you have than here. And But then, look at this. The other day, Taipusa, so this Subramanya Swami, Kartik, Kartikeya Swami festival, people come and from all over they walk. They only walk. They don't take a... They come to the city. From the bus stand, I see people walk. Thousands. Thousands. Lakhs also, I should say. They have, I don't know how the temple is going to manage. And then you go all the way to the temple. Then you, you found, you reach the temple. And then you look up. You have to climb thousand steps. After this full journey, they have to climb thousand steps. And young, old, everybody is just walk. I want you to see that. That process is tapas. Please understand this. That process. 
no, I took a flight and then this is this and then I landed right there and then I paid 1,000 rupees, I got a darshan of song. I'm not saying don't do that. I want you to think through and compare that against this process. Going and seeing Swami within a fraction of a second, like I got a special dash because I'm a, you know, I know all the right people. I don't know. I don't know if it qualifies to be called tapas. I, I'm not saying don't do it, but anything is better than nothing. But tapas, I want you to understand and think through what tapas is. Process, the, the whole process is like that. Those days, that's how it was. And uh, of course, everybody cannot do all that. Put them, so there's a lot of physical endurance that is required. That's fine. Do what you can do. That's it. And so, but understand tapas to be, you, you, when you go through the process, that's when that Ishwara Pranidhanam comes. That's when that Ishwara comes into my life. And so, think about that. So, that mental strengthening. So, so therefore, that entire process is tapas, not just one particular moment of that process, right? And so, taking care of people who cannot take care of themselves, that also is tapas. That also is a lot of tapas. Many of you are doing that. And, uh, and so, Swamiji says, this is the, this is the best way to, to counter this this prarabdha. Prarabdha is there. We don't know what's going to happen. And so, especially prabala prarabdha. <clears throat> okay, prabala prarabdha means that that's the that things that are happening that you have no control over and that's that can be bordering trauma, right? That kind of thing. It's called prabala prarabdha. And so, strengthening the mind in this manner is the best way. And uh, we're able to face those situations and then we are able to reduce our impulsive reactions to situations by this by this kind of a value and practice. And then we become ready for Shravanam. First chapter, Swami reminds us, first chapter is Arjuna Vishada Yoga. So Arjuna also was sad. He was upset. He was sad. Actually, he, is, he, is, he, is, he, is, he never saw himself in that man. But then he was ready. He was smart enough to say, "No, I am confused, and I need to learn something. I need to, you need to teach me how to deal with these kinds of situations." So we become ready by these kinds of uh, disciplines and values. Okay, so tapaha. Yeah, we are spending some extra time on these words. See these shlokas. Every word is a big, is a topic, right? And it's not one sentence. This is not one sentence, really. Every word is a sentence. So it takes some time. Moreover, otherwise, what will happen? We simply study and then we translate the word and then we move on. Hey, every word is, is meant for us and we have to imbibe it. We have to, we have to reflect the meaning of these words. And so, our javam, again, Krishna must think it's very important, Arjuna. And you all know now why it is important. Thought, word and deed are aligned. Arjuna means straightness. Thought, word and deed are aligned. So a person who does what he says and a person who says what he thinks, that person is a, is a simple person, correct? Easy to follow, a trustworthy person. Not complicated. The other person is complicated. Constantly hiding something. Will not, will not divulge things that I am supposed to know. And constantly keeping you guessing. Correct? Guessing. Many families, people are all guessing. Father is guessing. Mother is guessing. Son is guessing. I'll, I'll say the members are guessing what the father is going to do. Because he withholds all information. And they are constantly guessing. And so guess what? At Arjamam. But a person who wants to pursue the Shastram has to be simple, simple, straightforward. And uh, can't do misrepresentation and you know, trying to, trying to, there's some words for it, trying to present oneself to be different than what the person is. All these things should just disappear from our character, from our nature. 
and so and obviously krishna thinks that is important it's important even to lead a simple life it is important a happy life means you have to have these values and so what to talk of this pursuit of a shastra right all right so this completes the first shloka i think i've covered all the words all the values every word is a, is a value here right daivi sampat and uh, i'm not going to translate it and we will translate everything after the third shloka okay so let's look at the second one ahimsa satyam akrodaha tyagaha shantihi apaishunam daya bhuteshu alolutvam mardavam srihi achapalam okay these are the words right so let's look at this ahimsa again we saw ahimsa where did we see ahimsa 13 chapter 13 chapter ahimsa shanti rajyam they came together madam bhatvam ahimsa anitvam adam bhitvam ahimsa shanti rajyam 13.7 you want to make a note so we spend some time there <clears throat> so rather than repeat or skip entirely two options we have right i can say now we've done it we can move on but krishna has said it purposely so we have to spend some time on it. we also saw it in uh, 10th chapter ahimsa samata tushtihi isada tapah right tapodanam yasho yasha 105 there also ahimsa is the first value that he mentioned so this ahimsa this is the value only in india to me india means only in a vedic culture only in a tribal culture it seems to be value it's not a value in other cultures other religions don't have a value they say but when they practice it's all different it's very obvious it's not a value in other cultures i'm telling you see one thing treat your neighbor as thyself there is some which means what it means you can't hurt the person with some implication you can't do things to another person which you wouldn't do to yourself or to your people that is the mean that is ahimsa really but our idea of ahimsa is very sophisticated to a point of tyaga sacrifice and uh, there was a religious there was a religious conference where swami ji attended i told you this before one person said from one of the peaceful religion they said no we don't ahimsa is not a value for us ahimsa is not a value for us he said that straight away to swami at swami ji's face swami ji okay no it's not a value for us so we have to understand first one thing all religions are not the same and we think we project our idea of religion on other religions that's a big mistake you can't do that you can't do that you you have to study the other religion in order to understand the other religions you just agree to give some space right anyway so what is the meaning of the word ahimsa himsa varjanam abstaining from himsa abstaining from hurting okay so abstaining from what absolute or not this is the question so i asked somebody somebody said ahimsa is important right i said okay i said i walk i was walking and then i some thorn some nail went inside under my foot is it himsa or ahimsa then he said no no that is that is not that's neither himsa nor ahimsa yeah you got hurt but it just happened from a from a nail you know nail doesn't intend to hurt you so it's not it just doesn't fall in that category okay then i said i went to the hospital and then the nurse treated me and it was painful that whole process of dressing and this that was painful is that himsa is she is she hurting me oh no no that is different she is not hurting you hey but she is hurting me I mean, I've been screaming. I'm screaming. She's hurting me. If she had not touched me, I wouldn't be hurting. No, no, no. That's because you allow yourself to get hurt by her 
so that you can get better. You know that it's better to get hurt now than to suffer later. Ah, that means what? That means what? You allow somebody to hurt yourself so that my suffering can reduce. Overall, I have, I have, I'm smart enough to say that this is the best option. He is not hurting me, really speaking. But even if she appears to be hurting me, that's not, that's, that's warranted. That's warranted. I've signed a piece of paper that says, go ahead, do what you want. I will not sue the hospital for what happens to me. That's a huge statement, right? And so, look at that. So much himsa is going on. So much hurting is going on. But nobody agrees that it is himsa. Everybody says it's ahimsa. Why? And what about Bhagavad Gita? Antavanta ime dehaha nitya syokta sharirinaha anashino prame yasya. Krishna is saying, Antavanta ime dehaha. Hey, Arjuna, these bodies are bound to collapse sometime. Antavantaha ime dehaha. Nitya syokta sharirinaha. Hey, but then there is a dehi. There is a Shariri who is indwelling this body. Anashinaha, that Shariri is Abhinashi, can't be destroyed. Okay. Aprameyaha, etc. It says, Tasmad Yudhyasva Bharata. Therefore, you should fight. What logic is that? Body will always die. Suppose somebody says, if body is anyway going to die, therefore I will kill you. That's what the argument is. It looks like Krishna is making that argument. Hey, therefore, you see, Dasma Yudhyasva, in this Bhagavad Gita, where Vedanta is being taught, Atma is being to talk about, Arjuna is asked to fight, and this is not some ordinary, some, some cock fight, where two, two guns are fighting. No, no. Hundreds and thousands of people are going to get killed. Killed every day of these so many days of battle. People are there. He's got Arjuna is going to create widows according to him. Okay, that's the kind of battle Krishna is asking him to fight. Himsa himsa. This man who talks about himsa is asking him to, I mean, talking about ahimsa is asking him to do himsa. What is this? Contradictory. Ah, that's why this value is not understood properly. Ahimsa value is not understood. Either some people apply it in an absolute way. Absolute means what? You can't hurt. That's it, period. These are all the peace brigade people. They love this. Peace brigade people. You know this. Sometimes they use the word Gandhi in their institution's name. Swami Tattavida Anandaji says, these peace brigade people, you ask them to, you ask them to, you face, ask them to face any conflict, they will just run away from conflict. They don't know how to deal with conflict. Dangerous people. <laughs> Dangerous people because they don't want conflict because himsa, ahimsa, Mahatma Gandhi. And they quote Mahatma Gandhi and spoil his name also in the process. Mahatma Gandhi, okay, there are a lot of things about him, but at least he had the courage to say, you get out of this country. And uh, okay, I'm not going to use arms, etc. He said, Anyway, but look at that extreme ahimsa. Problem. It creates a lot of problems. Where you are supposed to strike, you have to strike. Okay. That is why I feel, I thought about this. I spent a lot of time thinking about this. And, you know, India, Indians are respected for what they do professionally outside the country, let's say. Indians are respected for their work, but they are not respected for anything else. Think about it. I thought about it. I thought about it. My own opinion. You can disagree with me or what. Because India is not a great country. It's been, it's been a begging country all along. It has been going with the begging ball to United Nations and this and that, constantly warring against Pakistan and everything and keeping quiet. Who will respect this country? Please tell me. Please tell me. A country that cannot take care of itself, who will respect the country? No. Only now. Only now. Means in the last five years, ten years. Some respect India is getting. Why? Because it's standing up for itself. A person who doesn't know to stand up for themselves 
how will anybody respect that person? Think about it. So, this value of ahimsa just stretched all the way to the limit. Is of no use to anybody. Is of no use to anybody. This guy who talks about ahimsa like this, stretches like this, and something happens. A thief comes and steals stuff from his house. He is the first one to report this to the police. And the police <clears throat> beats up the person. That's okay for this person. But for all other cases, ahimsa. This is all confused idea. That's why ahimsa should not be translated as abstinence from violence. Ahimsa should be translated as abstaining from unwarranted hurt and violence. Interpreted. It means interpret. Now you should ask the question, who is to decide what is unwarranted and violent? Correct. That is called interpretation. Dharma itself is interpretation. Dharma, right wrong, is interpretation. The nurse example is one. She, she pokes a sense a needle into my body. That is very hurtful. But there the context is different. There she means well for me and therefore that kind of hurt is acceptable. Dharma is always interpreted. Telling the truth. Satyam, Vada. So the doctor goes around telling tells the truth to the patient. Oh, you have a, you have a cardiac weakness. You, you can't, uh, uh, you can die anytime. Because that's the truth, you know. No, the doctor will not talk like that. I will say, there are some issues, you have to protect your heart. And you enjoy life. <clears throat> and so there are certain things you avoid doing. Don't climb stairs, all that stuff. That is the right way to. He may or may, he has the right to withhold the truth. He has the right, correct? Dharma, Satyam Vada, Satyam Vada, Priyam Vada, Hitam Vada. It's followed by so many other things. So it's not a vacuum. You can't take the statement in a vacuum. Satyam Vada, okay, speak the truth. Priyam Vada, let it be told in a very pleasing way. And sometimes truth is unpleasant also. So then what? You have to play that game. You have to learn to play that game and say the right things at the right time. Hitam Vada, let it be useful. Let it be useful. Let the truth you speak be useful. You look at somebody, somebody comes to you, comes to your home, and then you tell them, Oh, I hate your dress. Because it's the truth, you know, because you hate the dress. That is the truth. So you told, because Guruji said you have to speak the truth, so you spoke the truth. You know what she'll say? She'll say, What's your Ragat Besha, my dear friend? You're studying Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Yeah. She, she doesn't get upset. She is smart. She knows what you're doing. That's what she will respond. And so, that's, that's it. So, you can't just say this truth just because you feel it's the truth. That's not acceptable. And so, it constantly we are interpreting every day, every minute. Should I say this? Should I do this? How should I do it? Interpreting. Constantly interpreting. Right? And you look at the judiciary of any country. Judiciary. Best example of dharma. How dharma is interpreted, right? Somebody has clearly says, "Yeah, I shot the person." Has the gun also. But, so you should jail the guy. No, weeks and weeks of deliberations going on to find out if this guy had the intention to kill. Correct. And then that guy can go scot free also. No, under the circumstances, what he did is the right thing. He, he, he shot the other person. That's the right thing to do. Look at that. That is judicial. Because debating, jury, whole process, whole process, just meant to figure out this warranted, unwarranted. Was it warranted or unwarranted? Correct? That killing, was it warranted or not? <clears throat> so, so that, that's where we have to apply this. That's why we have to be mature enough to apply it properly. If I don't know how to interpret a situation, I have to ask somebody. How to how 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 should I respond to this situation? It could be a family situation. Often it's family situation. Okay. So we are all good at. It. I mean, we, we know all these things, but we have to apply it. And it's it's there are many complicated situations these days where we have to apply it. Burning the national flag. This is a very popular pastime for some people in America. They go and burn the national flag. 
American flag. Okay, is it Himsa, Ahimsa? What is it? Which category will you put it in? Himsa. Showing his frustration. It is himsa. showing his frustration. May I speak, please? Yeah. Okay, Himsa answer. Okay, Haraji, go ahead. It shows his frustration against something. All right, it shows his frustration. Okay, all right. Is he committing a him act of himsa or not? That is the question. Yes, he is mentally, not. mentally. Mentally. It is, is not. Uh, it is not. Is, uh, this is, One second, let Haraji speak. Not. Let Haraji speak. Go ahead. It is not because he is showing a frustration against his government doing something incorrect. Okay, so look at that. So he's saying it's not an act of himsa. When this guy has, so the other argument is what? So he's showing a frustration against the government. Okay, government is doing himsa to me, therefore I will give back the himsa to the government, right? That means what the person knows very well that burning a flag is going to hurt many people's sentiments. He knows that very well, correct? He knows that very well. So it is. It is. It is. It's not. Go, it's not. A, it's not like st go, standing in protest in in the front of White House or in going to Delhi and protest like these farmers do. Okay, it's not like that. A peaceful protest, whatever. I want to express my dissatisfaction. It's not like that. Burning a flag. Okay, yeah, there is a big debate. It's a big debate. I consider it as an act of himsa because it is not the government. Also, people are also involved. And people salute the flag. People consider it sacred. Government, yeah, correct. You have your frustration. You have to express it in other ways, maybe. That is well in my view. And he knows very well this is going to hurt many people. And therefore, he does it. Okay. Anyway, that's a debatable. The question here is, I'm, I purposely mentioned this. So I'll give you another example. I'll give you another example. Drinking milk products. Drinking or consuming milk products? It is not because it gives you protein. Good. It is not because it gives you protein. But why should why should it even come under the category of himsa, Haraji? Why should even anybody mention it? Because it is hurting animals. You are taking away the milk for the kids. Sir. Okay. So. So why did I mention this? Because there are two sides to it now. Two sides. You have to interpret. You got to break your head over this. Okay. Because, see, those days, those days, I used to remember, we used to have cows in the in the back. Two or three cows will be there. Then in the morning, we used to milk the cows. The cow is waiting. And then you just milk the cows. And then it's waiting. It's just coming and it's coming close and it's turning around also. Because it knows that that's the position. It gives the milk and then the milk is consumed by others. And the family, the cows are there, calf is there, and everybody is fed. And it's, it's a family. Cow becomes a part of the family. It is a symbiotic relationship. Now, people will argue, you, I've, gone to, I've gone to this one, a factory farm. It's called a factory farm. Yeah, so I did all that. I did a lot of crazy things. And this is one of the crazy things, which is I went to a slaughterhouse. I went to a factory farm also. Slaughterhouse did not see the slaughter part, but see the saw the growing, the pigs and all that. You've seen, I don't think they show all the other. Anyway, so there, look at that. The cows, now the cow used to give milk. Now it has become where I take milk from the cow. I suck the milk out of it. So now the relationship is very different. And the animal is hurt very much. It's very obvious. This, this, this is the story. This is a very big story. And uh, they are not taken care of. They are only treated as a source of milk. Whereas in a home or in a, a, a traditional setting, they are treated as a part of the family where I protect the cow. The cow also helps me provide milk. 
and then Haraji talked about protein. Okay, if I want protein, I can get that protein from the cow. Both are happy. Today, the situation is not like that. Therefore, this whole movement, vegan movement and all has come about. Okay. So it is not straightforward. Many people will argue that, no, I would rather abstain from having milk than get my protein. I'll try to get my protein some other. This argument, you can't argue with them also. And so because then for that person, that hurting the animal becomes an important. Not hurting the animal, animal becomes important. Okay, another example. I'm telling you, I'm giving you this example because the Ahimsa has to be properly thought of. And a person who is committed to Ahimsa, that person's life will be very different from everybody else's. Guaranteed. Surgical strike, India on Pakistan. Ahimsa or Ahimsa? Ahimsa. Raja Dharma. <laughs> Surgical <laughs> strike. Narayanji has the courage to say it is Ahimsa. Yes, it is Ahimsa only. If you don't protect it, is, it is Ahimsa. ahimsa. Yeah, so that's what. So, point is what? See, there are times when you have to strike. You have to strike. And but it, it, it is subjective because other side they think that it is Ahimsa because their people are dying. So, in fact, that, uh, is why, that is why I'm giving the example. That's why I'm giving fact, the example. Uh, India lost its freedom because of a wrong understanding of all. Okay, one minute, one minute. Rapuji, no, no, we're not going to discuss it now. Okay, we're not later. Satsang, let's discuss. I'm just giving the example because there are two sides. Every every example I gave you, there are two sides. Two sides are there. That means you have to debate and you have to come to a conclusion. Each person will come to a separate conclusion, correct? Different conclusions. Why? Because it's not black and white. It's not black and white. Depends on the perspective, this, that. But finally, somebody, you, you as a person has to decide one way or the other. And so, therefore, I have all these, many of these values come under that. Satyam Mada, that category only. Ahimsa, that category only. That's why it's not, the person who doesn't understand the value properly is going to misinterpret it and will confuse himself and the rest of the people who follow him also. Gone. So, that's very, very, very important value to be properly understood. So now you got all these things like fair trade, no animal testing. You have all these words in those cartons these days. Been there for a while now. And uh, why no animal testing? Because some people care for animal testing. Some people care about all these things. Guruji, even uh, whacking your own child. Two sides. There are also two sides. Debate. Lakshmiji will organize a conference. Bringing up children. The, what is the role of the stick? Something like that. Catchy title she will put. And then uh, debate. Yeah, debate is there. Because hurt is involved. And some people will say this is the right amount of hurt. This, that. You should be interested to hear all those arguments. Anyway, that's why they say Ahimsa Paramo Dharma. That's why we are spending a lot of time on this. Ahimsa Paramo Dharma. Because if I can appreciate Ahimsa and Himsa, and if I am I'm able to interpret situations properly, then, then reasonably well, okay, I don't have to please other people. But if I can interpret it properly to the best extent, then all other values will come along. Ahimsa implies sensitivity plants also, the ecology also. And so, a sannyasi's vow to the universe is sarva bhute bhyaha bhayam. Hey, you don't have to be afraid of me anymore. Huge call it is. Means the sannyasi is saying, I'm withdrawing. I'm withdrawing voluntarily. And I will, I surrender to you. Because now I have nothing to fear. Neither you need to be afraid of me, nor I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid of nothing, in fact. So, therefore, I just go back. I withdraw. Which call it is. And so, our, our culture will just take us all the way up to that, that point. And for such a person, Ahimsa is one of the greatest values. A person builds that value with, uh, with time, with time, and then it helps that person in taking sannyas. 
sannyasa is natural for that person. Because now the person knows competing is also causing him sad. Competing. Competing. Doesn't mean the person won't compete. He will compete in a most harmonious way. Okay, that's why we have rules and all that. And uh, But then that also causes him sad. If you become sensitive to that, then you cannot but find ways to just withdraw and do something else. No choice. Value drives actions. Values drive our life. And so we see many people who do very different things because of their values for certain things here. Anyway, Ahimsa value, I think you all know it very well. Satyam. Satyam means what? Asatya Varjanam. Absence of speaking untruth. Okay, that is called Satya Varjanam. And we already saw that you don't speak the truth just because it's the truth. You can always withhold truth. Everything that is true, you don't want to say. And uh, so, Satyam Vada, Hitam Vada, Priyam Vada, Satyam Bruyat, Apriyam Na Bruyat, like this, you have many statements in our Shastram. And so, Swami gives an idea. Suppose the truth is unpleasant, how do you deal with the situation? You have to say it. Swami says, tell the unpleasant truth quickly and more. Like that he gives an idea. Quickly, it means you don't, you have to say it. Okay, you can't, whether it's your husband or wife or children, whatever, you have to say it. Relative, whatever, friend, you have to say it. But just say it clearly and more. And so that, that person receives it, heard it. Did you say it? That person would think at least, you know what, she said this. He said this. Otherwise, if you keep keep on at it, then the person becomes defensive and it's of no use. So like that's what she said. Anyway, and these are all things we learn along the way. Akrodha. Akrodha. Akrodha also we've seen before, right? Krodha. Arjuna asked the question about Krodha and then Sri Bhagavan Vacha Kama Yesha Krodha Yesha Rajo Bunasa Mudbhavaha Mahasha Nomaha Papma. Greatest enemy is anger, he says. And then earlier also we saw Krodha in the second chapter. Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsaha Sangaste Shupa Jayate Sangat Sanjayate Kamaha Kama Krodho Vijayate Krodha. Why? Why is Krodha? Anger just seizes my intellect. That which distinguishes me from an animal, the only thing that distinguishes a human being from an animal is seized during anger. It does not exist during a fit of anger. That's it. I just do things that I would otherwise not do. Correct? So, Sammohaha, Krishna says. And then, Krodha bhavati sammoha. See, look at the words bhavati there and jayate vishayan pumsaha sangaste shupajayate upajayate sangat sanjayate kama. With that sangha, if I am constantly thinking of certain things, then kama develops. Kama is slowly born from that kind of a pondering, right? Then kama krodo bijayate. Krodha, okay, Krodha. Then that Kama will lead to Krodha, will lead to Krodha. Then what happens? Once Krodha comes, Krodha Bhavati. He doesn't say Jayate. He says Bhavati. Jayate means it's born, right? It develops, leads to Bhavati. Bhavati means instantaneous. Krodha is there, means intense, instantaneously I become deluded. There is no process. It is instantaneous. That's why he uses the word Bhavati there. Okay. So, that is the reason Akrodha is an important value. It's a value because anger cannot be prevented. Means I can never say I will be free of anger. Because situations are there and we are all human beings, we have a mind, etc. We have a background. So, anger will come. That's why Swamiji translates Akrodha as anger management. He doesn't say freedom from anger. And we, we have need to think about all these things. This is what makes our Swamiji is very unique. Because they, they, it's very practical. 
and not theoretical. Otherwise, akrodha is about freedom from anger. Lifelong, I'll be saying, oh, I'm always angry, I'm always angry, always anger comes, always anger. I'll be condemning myself. A, anger will come. That's why Krishna is talking about it so many times. Anger will be there. Will be there. How do you manage, how do you deal with anger is the question. Anger will come. Let's talk later. I'm not in a mood to talk. Good. That's a good. We postpone the whole discussion. Okay. Or, I mean, sometimes you should not postpone. That's a different problem. Okay. But I'm just talking about anger. <laughs> Otherwise, postpone, postpone, procrastinate, and then that leads to other problems. Anyway. So, which Swamiji would say, if you're angry about and somebody, you write a letter and uh, you write a letter and in, in a language, in your native language. Native language is, means what? Means a language in which you are most comfortable uttering, writing the unutterable words. Okay, that is your language. Okay, those, just write, write, write. And then, and then read the letter after two days. You'll be shocked. Is this I who wrote this? Oh, this, it's not correct. Just burn the letter. Burn it. Or another example Swamiji gives. He says, you're angry at somebody, you you take a turkey towel, long turkey towel, wet it, and then wet it. It must be wet because that is heavy, right? And then just, just beat the floor or beat the wall. Lock yourself in the, in the restroom and then beat and somebody, what if somebody asks, what's going on? No, I'm just washing. <laughs> Is there something? I'm just washing the tub. The old-fashioned way I'm washing. You know, old-fashioned ways to do that. I think that was a good exercise to just get rid of the anger. Attack. They used to do that. And even here in the in the homes and all that, they have a stone, you know, they have a stone, a, 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 a granite stone, which is just uneven, you know, and it's used to beat the cloth on and then the water is just flows down like that it is there. Anyway, these are all ideas. Anger management is important and I've, I've been with, I've seen people who are very angry, who get very angry and uh, I even recommended those kind of courses. There are anger management courses also really these days and so these are all important. Anyway, so we should uh, conclude now. I, you know, this then this anger management. I was, I have to say this. The guy that comes to my mind is Vivek Ramaswamy. You know, you know this. The, the the people who can really make you angry are the media people. They will, they can make your blood boil by asking the questions and provoking. They will just provoke. And the guy who responds to these media people so well. Is Vivek Ramaswamy, who is a who is a who is a this one, you know, the Republican candidate he was to be, he withdrew. But uh, the way he responded, I was so impressed. And uh, what media, whether it is media or anybody else, and town hall meeting and this and that, the way they asked questions and he responded, I found it to be fantastic. So anyway, he knows how to manage because very provocative questions, and then you can't get angry. Now, Trump can afford to get angry and get elected also, but that's a different story. But <laughs> anyway, Akrodaha, important value, like Ahimsa. We'll continue. <laughs> Om Apadamapahattaram Dataram Sarvasampadam Loka Viramam Sriramam Bhūyo Bhūyo Namāmyaṁ Om Pūrnamadaf Pūrnamidam Pūrnāt Pūrnamudachyate Pūrnasya Pūrnamadāya Pūrnameva Vashishyate Om Shānti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Pyo Namah Harihi Om